Today I'm going to show you how to work with query parameters in WIST. We're taking my existing build as an example. Uh, for example, if I want to look into Mr. X's profile, you will see that I will get Mr. X's profile. So we managed to set this up in only two actions and we were able to repurpose existing actions using very simple conditional if statements that we already have to find in the previous project. So let's dive right into that. Um, so the main two actions um, start on the main page. So let's just reload this real quick because I just went to a different side of the page. Sometimes the configurator has some issues with that. Um, we already have our skeleton loader in there, so it's compatible with that as well. But if we go into the setup here, um, it's very simple. On page load, uh, oh, that's the wrong one, sorry. Uh, we have this one, navigate to query param. So it's very simple. We apply this attribute to the item of the rendered list and we do a setting on on event, click, prevent default, navigate to. Here's the magic. We do return. We do the string of the path. Um, you could even do this in one. I'll just, I just like best practices. I just merge them in different pieces together. Then you will add your query parameter and you will do the plus for the variable that will contain the query parameter. Let me give you an example. If I were to just return this, I will get two because that's the ID of the first item in the iteration where I will be clicking on. So if I revert this back, oh, if I revert this back, I will get item, path item, query parameter for ID equals two. I will be able to reuse that now. Um, so this is where we will be navigating. So very simple. On click, this action will work. So let's go back to Mr. X. On click, this is what we're setting. We will be having the query parameter set. We can double check that in here in the canvas. And yeah, now since we have the query parameter, we need to define an action that will actually load the record for Mr. X. And it's very simple too. So if we go to the get query parameter item data, we want to do an event page starts loading and conditional because we only want this to load on the page that is the page where we want the query parameter to be on. For example, if Mr. X is a collection item in the items collection, we want the path to be item. This is where, this is only the path where this action will run because this is the only um, scenario where we will have this query parameter added. Um, if, for example, you have other paths, you could do um, or, and then you can add another path. I don't have that, so we're working with that. And then we do perform request, get param item. That's it, simply on page load. Now, if we don't go to the request, here comes some magic in. We just do a normal get call item ID and we just put the parameter in this in here. So we get the parameter, excuse me, we get the parameter from, from here and we are returning this to the database. And if I were to run this right now, it wouldn't work, right? Um, fail to fetch, but if I were to reload that, it will work, right? In here, wonderful. It just has, seems to have that issue um, because I did something wrong, probably, <laughs> uh, clicking on it in the configurator. But yeah, this is how it's going to work. We are sending this for to the database and we're returning the record for, and we're getting the for from the query parameter right here. Very simple. Now the question is how are we going to set the text without having to create more actions? I just want to warn you, because this setup may get clunky. Um, we are using if statements and conditional logic for that. But I'm getting a ton of requests how to do things in less than 10 actions. And this whole thing right now is built in less than 10 actions. Um, it would be 14 if we had to repurpose some things. But I just want to walk you through a possibility 
that is not good at scale. You don't want to have 500 if statements in your conditional logic. If you have it moderate, if you have like five, that's perfectly fine. And this is also still best practices because this is how ordinary development works too. So let's just look into that. For the skeleton loader, we have something very smart. If the path equals index, so home, the, the logic we will return will be um, Cosmix has requests that doesn't equal true. And if the end path equals the path item, this is the logic we're going for. We're here looking for the Cosmix request and we're here looking for the get param item request. Because if I'm on this page, I don't have this request. But if I'm on this page, I have this request. And if I'm on this page, I have this request. So we're using existing components and we are considering the logic of on which page it is to repurpose actions that we already have. And we're doing the same thing for text. If we're on the index page, we will be returning get cosmics dot data v iterator. So we will return the iteration, the dollar sign this of the item from the array. And if this is the item page, we will only use dot notation, no iterator, because we're only returning the name. If you just need something visual here, think of it like this. If I am on this page, the index page, I will return the data from here which will take seven seconds to load because we're still on the skeleton. But I will return this and I will return this. I will return this. I will return the iteration, right? We see it right here. Oh, I clicked on it. <laughs> Good. We can now go in one step further. Now, if this is the page item right here, we don't want to return this request because this request doesn't exist. We want to return in the same item um, the name from this request, Timmy, which we're doing right here and which you can see is happening right here. So I don't encourage this when you're working with 500 pages, but it's a nice way that when you are in this scenario, you want to stay at the $9 plan you have a very small setup. This is a nice way to have this at the lower scale of the setup. But I want to mention for the pricing, I think it is very um, reasonable because the ownability it gives you, because you understand how the code on your page is working. It's easy organizable. Um, you are able to connect it with a, a third party APIs without having to expose your API keys and all of that. So I think it's worth it, even with the new pricing. But I know a lot of people are all around the world. So the pricing may differentiate and the currency conversions. So I just wanted to show a way how you can get this in uh, less than 10 actions. And yeah, I hope that you will uh, clone this project and rebuild it. You will find the clonable in the video description. And please let me know if you want any other videos uh, about any other topics that come to your mind. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate that and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.